How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. And in today's tutorial, Quinn is going to show you the new warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro 2021. We actually re-uploaded it and added a few more dope details. Premiere Pro 2021 is out and I'm going to show you guys the new and improved warp stabilizer within Premiere Pro. Warp Stabilizer is an effect you can place on your shaky footage to smooth it out and stabilize it. I literally use Warp Stabilizer all the time for my footage. Um, it has been a lifesaver. So I'm really excited to see how well this works and how much better it is than Premiere Pro 2020. And then I'll do a deep dive on how to use Warp Stabilizer and get the most out of it. Let's hop in Premiere, do some comparisons and see how much it has improved. So here is a clip I have from Las Vegas a few years back, handheld, super shaky. So we're gonna go into Premiere and add the warp stabilizer effect. But when comparing the two, you can see right off the bat, Premiere 2021 is significantly faster. And in total, Premiere 2020 took a minute and 45 seconds, whereas 2021 took only 36 seconds. So that's a huge improvement with the time it takes to render these clips out. And if we look at the final stabilized footage, you can definitely see a little bit of a difference in 2021. It's definitely a little bit smoother and looks more like you're using an actual gimbal. The next clip I tested is also a handheld shot of me walking down the street. So it's super shaky. I am just really impressed at how much faster 2021 is. So 2020 took a minute 33 to render and 2021 took only 32 seconds. When looking at the final stabilized footage, 2020 does a solid job, but you can definitely see an improvement in the smoothness and steadiness of Premiere 2021. Also, if you are a creator and you're newly interested in shooting products, we just launched a full product video course where I cover getting clients, shooting, editing, pricing your video. It's a really great way to get a grasp on shooting product content. The link is productvideoschool.com, so feel free to check it out. I definitely can appreciate a good upgrade to something I use on the daily. I definitely think it's a bit faster and better. If you agree or disagree, let me know what you think. Try it out on your own footage. And now we'll take a deeper look at Warp Stabilizer and how to use it. Here I am in Premiere Pro 2021. I'm gonna show you guys how to use Warp Stabilizer and how to get the most out of it by tweaking and adjusting the settings. So I just shot this really purposely shaky footage so I can show you guys how we can adjust and tweak the settings to make it look as best as we can. So we're gonna go over to our effects panel, which for me is in this upper left-hand corner. If you don't see the effects panel, you can go over to window and select effects and that will bring it up. So you'll go ahead and type in warp stabilizer and you can see it here and drag it onto your clip. Immediately it'll start analyzing. Once that's done, it smooths out the clip and actually does a really good job considering how shaky this clip was. Um, but you'll definitely see that little wobbly looking effect, which sometimes happens with warp stabilizer and we're gonna tackle that effect in a bit. But first I'll walk you guys through the settings and what they mean. These are all the default settings that'll happen whenever you apply the clip. Under stabilization, you have result. Um, this is the result that you want, obviously. Um, it's smooth motion and no motion. Smooth motion is the default. Basically, if your clip is moving in any way, you'll select smooth motion. No motion is essentially if you want like a tripod effect and you're shooting handheld and it's on just one subject, but you have a little bit of shakiness, that's when you would click no motion. And then smoothness is the intensity of the warp stabilizer effect. So this is something you can adjust, uh, which will We'll get into in a little bit and then you have methods so these are the methods with which warp stabilizer is using to smooth out your clip and the default is subspace warp um, and how i think of it is everything above it is one dimension less so subspace warp is a combination of position scale rotation and perspective if you go ahead and select position you'll see that it's just adjusting the position of the clip 
And then if you go ahead and do scale and rotation, it's changing the scale and the rotation to make it look a little bit smoother. And then perspective basically puts corner pins on your footage to stabilize it. And then subspace warp is taking sections of the video and warping it to make it look as stable as possible. Then you have preserve scale and you can select this if you don't want it to scale in at all. And then we have borders. So you'll see that if I turn off the warp stabilizer, uh, it crops in quite a bit. So this is also something to keep in mind if you're shooting and planning on using warp stabilizer is to understand that it's gonna crop a little bit in order to stabilize your clip. So make sure there's nothing super important along the edges or maybe shoot a little bit wider. But under borders, you have framing, which is the ways it's cropping and scaling to stabilize your clip. The default is stabilize crop auto scale. Um, and if you go ahead and select stabilize only, this is just stabilizing the clip. So you'll see uh, there are these black edges. Basically, you would only use this if you want to see how well the stabilization is working. Um, but usually you never use this because you'd have these weird black edges coming up. And then you can go ahead and do stabilize crop. So that'll just crop your footage, um, but it won't do any scaling. And then you have stabilize crop auto scale. So that'll actually scale in so that you're not seeing any of those black edges. And then you also have stabilize and synthesize edges. So I have not had much success with this, but basically what this does is kind of fill out those black edges and use frames of the footage to kind of recreate these, I guess, fake edges. Even when I click this, you'll see my clip kind of just fails out on me and does not even play or do anything. Yeah, I can't even play the clip. So I haven't had much success with this, but this is something you can and play around with. And then you can play around with the scaling. So you can choose your maximum amount you want it to scale. Um, you can adjust your safe margins. You can add more scale in. And then under advanced, you have detailed analysis. This is basically a more intense um, version of analyzing the footage. So if you have time, it'll take a lot longer, but it might be worth testing it out. Then you have fast analysis, which is the default. So the warp stabilizer sometimes has this strange ripple looking effect and rolling shutter ripple will help adjust that. So you can do an automatic reduction or an enhanced reduction and that'll help lower that kind of weird ripply effect. And then you have crop less smooth more. Um, so this is a slider and you can adjust this if you don't want as much cropping or if you want it to be smoother and you don't mind more cropping so you can play around with that. And then you'll see these synthesize adjustments here. This will activate if you change your framing to stabilize synthesize edges and these are just ways you can kind of adjust this effect and try and get it to work as best as it can. I haven't used this or done much with this, so I feel like it's not as useful, but if you do change your framing to synthesize edges, I would recommend playing around with this. And then you have hide warning banner. So sometimes you'll get this warning sign if your clip is really difficult to stabilize and that'll just turn that off. So now that we ran through all the different settings, I'm gonna show you guys how I personally would adjust this clip to get rid of that sort of strange warpy looking effect. So the first thing that I usually do is turn down the smoothness. I can even turn it down to like 10 or five. And that will off the bat just kind of take off a little bit of the warp stabilizer effect. Um, and I think that'll improve my shot a little bit so you can see it looks a little bit better. And then I'll immediately change my method. So I'll kind of go down the list and see what looks the best. So already to me that looks like a world of a difference versus the original, but I will try position scale rotation and see if that looks a little bit better. So that, to me, that looks pretty much the same. And we'll actually just try position. Yeah, so that doesn't look as good. So I'll probably change it to perspective. And I'll even try to lower this a little bit. Turn the smoothness down to five and I think that looks even better. I'll bump up the cropping a little bit to smooth it out.
so yeah so basically i would go in change your smoothest change your method um and you can even play around with your framing and scaling and that is how you'll get much better results by using this so sometimes the default settings don't work the best and it's important to adjust those settings so that you can get some smoother clips Adobe has released a lot of new upgrades for 2021, so be sure to check out some of the other videos on the channel about those features. I'm always excited when we get some new upgrades as editors because it makes our lives easier. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.